Hello, and welcome to our midweek words of encouragement. Daniel Darling is an author, pastor, and podcast host. He is also the Senior Vice President of Communications for the National Religious Broadcasters Organization. He wrote a blog post that appeared on Crosswalk.com, an online Christian living magazine, in the midst of the 2012 presidential campaign. The title of that article was Five Attitudes Towards Someone With Whom We Disagree, a topic that is every bit as relevant today as it was eight years ago. Daniel begins his post by saying that, for many Christians, it can be difficult to know how to engage in an uncivil culture and in an uncivil season. If you'd like to read his full blog post, I'll put a link to it in the notes below. But for now, I'd like to focus on his fifth point. We should speak with grace. At this point, he quotes the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, where he writes, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. As I mentioned last week, this is another one of those familiar verses to me, and that means that when I hear it, I have to fight the tendency to simply say, oh yeah, I know that. I need to stop, pause, think. What helps me most, for me anyway, is to reread the verse in different versions and in paraphrases. Most of these times, most of them have the same or at least similar wording, but usually a few stand out and make me think about how the translators got to that particular wording. Listen to Eugene Peterson's take on this verse from The Message. He says this, Use your heads as you live and work among outsiders. Don't miss a trick. Make the most of every opportunity. Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in the conversation not to put them down, not to cut them out. Wow, how often is my goal to bring out the best in others in a conversation? If I'm honest, my goal is usually to win the argument, to convince the other person to see things from my point of view. And if I have to put them down or cut them out in order to win the argument, then so be it. Truth must prevail. Really? At what cost? If I alienate a person and move them farther from Christ, then winning the argument means losing a soul. Scripture tells us that Jesus was full of grace and truth, both, all the time, in full measure. Daniel goes on to say, followers of Jesus should be marked by grace. This means that what we post, what we say, what we discuss should run through the prism of grace. How is graceful speech different than ordinary speech? It flows from a heart humbled by God's forgiveness. It considers the human being behind the argument, and it tries not to divide, but to unite. He concludes his post with these words, Graceful speech is open to new arguments, admits wrongs, and doesn't assume that it's always right all the time. In short, I believe that grace-filled speech involves a lot of listening and with the goal of understanding why the person with who I disagree has their particular viewpoint. And I mean really listen, not just be thinking about how I can refute what they're saying. Jesus asked a lot of questions, and he listened to people. Listening shows love and care, and love and care extend grace. I think I'll be setting as a goal to bring out the best in others in my conversations with them. Will you join me?